Christ all, welcome and thank you very much for coming here to the Liberty Stadium in Swansea. It's not a very nice night, but you've all braved the weather and hopefully you will, you will learn something this evening and if you don't already have the belief in our nation that we have, we hope by the end of the evening you will start to have that stead within you. Now, twice in the last 100 years, Britain has led the way when freedom and democracy was threatened by a power seeking to control and dominate Europe. The good news is that our forefathers chose to do the right thing and not the easy thing. Will the British people today rise to the challenge? Do we believe in Britain as much as our parents do? This is a this is the most critical conversation that we will have in a generation. And that same determination and courage will be needed if we are to win our freedom. The question we need to ask ourselves are, is there anything that the EU decides for us that we could not decide for ourselves? Will the remaining EU nations trade freely with us or Will they start a trade war? Should Britain be a free, independent, sovereign nation once more? Are the British people good enough to decide their own future and write their own laws? The UK may be small, but we are powerful, an influential country on the world stage. Other countries do listen to us, and will trade with us. Whether we are in the EU or not, the World Trade Organization and the Lisbon Treaty will ensure that. To put it simply, we want to take back control of our country from the unaccountable, unaligned bureaucrats in Brussels. There is no reform of the EU that would give the supremacy of our parliament, our courts, and control of our own borders back to the UK. The whole purpose and design of the EU is that no country should be left with such powers. Stripping powers from nation states is what the European Union was set up to do. Because we believe in Britain, those of us wishing to leave the EU have been unfairly and misleadingly labelled as being anti Europe. We are not anti-Europe, but we are firmly opposed to Britain's political integration into a United States of Europe. Back in 1973, we were told that we were joining a common market. What we actually joined was a multinational political union. This new European state has its own flag national anthem, parliament, central bank, court of justice, a vast civil service, and fledgling military and police forces. If we vote yes to remain in the EU, then the EU will take that to mean that we accept all of these things, and they will go full speed ahead. The tentacles of the EU stretched into almost every area of our national life. The EU has complete control over British financial services, fishing, farming, energy and trade. It dictates UK business and employment legislation, as well as immigration rules. On these and many other issues, our elected Westminster politicians are effectively impotent. They pretend to have the power to influence matters, but actually, they have very little, if any. It is an out of sight, unaccountable European elite, which has the final say, and they do not consider Britain's best interests. After all, they have 28 nations that they have to consider. Whilst our politicians act out of pantomime in Westminster, the EU bureau bureaucrats have slowly but surely been allowed to take control of 
of our nation, one EU directive at a time. The European Parliament is no safeguard to democracy either, by the way. It is a sham of democracy, a thin veneer to appease the citizens of Europe. The European Parliament is the only legislature in the entire world where its members are not allowed to propose primary legislation. <coughs> they can only vote on decisions made by unelected commissioners, and even then, their vote can be, and often, is ignored. We have nothing to lose and everything to gain by leaving the EU. Despite the fact that we are the sixth largest economy and the seventh largest manufacturing nation in the world, we will never again make our own trade deal with any other nation unless we leave the EU. And I just want to repeat that. Despite the fact that we are the sixth wealthiest nation on the planet, we will never again make our own trade deal with any other nation unless we leave the EU. For example, the EU has negotiated in secret a trade deal with the USA, which is known as TTIP or TTIP, which directly threatens our NHS and exposes the British government to litigation by large American corporations. Our party is leading the charge to stop this deal from being imposed on the British people. We will never control our borders or manage immigration while in the EU. What kind of a country cannot even manage its own borders? We will never be able to prevent foreign trawlers from plundering our seas of precious, declining fish stocks. Who else would give away a national treasure like that? If the EU's plans for tax harmonization come to fruition soon, we will not even be able to set our own taxes. What else is coming down the track? The Euro. The Lisbon Treaty that Gordon Brown signed states very clearly the currency of the EU is the Euro. There is no mention of pounds or crown. A British exit from the EU, widely known as a Brexit, is the only choice open to us if we are to make our own laws and control our own destiny. <clears throat> Unless we leave our democracy, our lawmaking powers, and our sovereignty will continue to be salami sliced away by the EU. Genuine reform is impossible. Successive EU presidents, <clears throat> senior officials, and European prime ministers have consistently confirmed that there is no hope of Britain renegotiating any opt-outs or special treatment. As far as our influence goes, past experience shows that we have very little. As the European Union has expanded, our vote share in the Council of Ministers, the European Parliament and the European Commission has declined to the point where it is now almost insignificant. Even if every British MEP in the European Parliament voted together, this would constitute only 8% of the total vote. When Turkey or the Ukraine join, it will shrink even further. <coughs> we can vote no to proposals as often as we like, but unless other countries agree, the EU diktats will become British law anyway. Successive British governments have refused to instigate a comprehensive cost and benefit study of our membership of the EU, despite motions laid down in the House of Lords to request such a study. And even the smallest businesses carry out research each year into its returns and performance in order to calculate taxes. And yet the country, with the sixth largest economy in the world, has failed to investigate the benefit, or otherwise, of our EU membership. And finally, we've just heard 
these last few days from the governor of the Bank of England, in which he has released his verdict on our EU membership. But the best that he could muster up was that we had arguably benefited from the single market. But then he had to add that there were many risks associated with our EU membership, especially exposure to the euro and potential damage to legislation in the pipeline against the city of London. His point, his point about benefiting from the single market was that we could get trained staff quickly, if necessary, from elsewhere in Europe. But what he failed to point out is that so can any other country in the world. This is the purpose of work permits, is it not? Many hospitals in the UK do just this when they have a need for trained nurses or doctors. Instead of training them in our own country, we simply issue a work permit to a nurse from the Philippines or a doctor from India. There is no need for EU membership whatsoever. The latest figures from 2014 released by the Office of Budget Responsibility shows that our contribution has increased by 2.7 billion pounds between 2012 and 13. That figure has quadrupled since 2008. The membership fee of the EU is a staggering 55 million pounds each and every day. To put this figure into perspective, we could build 34 600 bed state of the art hospitals every year, or pay the wages of an extra 250,000 doctors, sorry, nurses, or policemen. One very important fact that's never mentioned by those advocating Britain's continued membership of the EU is the added cost to our industry, trade, commerce, and domestic household bills, in addition to the direct membership fee of 55 million pounds every day. It's estimated by sources, including the UK government itself and the Financial Conduct Authority, that just the top 100 regulations imposed by our membership of the EU are costing Britain an extra £33.3 billion pounds every year. This includes legislation such as the Renewable Energy Strategy, the EU Climate and Energy Package, and the Working Time Directive. Now what we've got to remember is that only 5% of the businesses in the UK export to the EU. But 100% of all of UK businesses must meet the cost of the unbelievable EU red tape imposed by the bureaucracies in Brussels. We also need to add the cost to each household. Um, in Britain, due to the increased grocery bills, estimated to be over £400 a year, caused by our common agricultural policy, which blocks the import of cheaper food to these shops. Ladies and gentlemen, it isn't just about me. If we take a hard-headed look at our EU membership, and look at the costs, and look at what we as a nation are paying for a membership of a trading group, we would all of us agree that we are not getting value from them. But it's more than that. It's about who we are as a people, who we are as a nation. Do we actually really believe in ourselves? And do we believe that our children should have a better future than the ones that our parents gave us? I truly believe in this nation. And I believe we're about to know that when we finally do get the day, we have for anything. And if we are given the ability to speak to the British people, that they will join with us and that they will agree that yes, Britain is better off. Thank you very much.